Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the evolution of the refrigerant manifold gauge set and why each of these are different. So I have a lot of questions that come in from, from students and also from YouTube comments. You know, what's the difference between these manifolds? Which one should I get first when I'm starting out in the field? So I'm going to go over each of those points and reasons of, of why things have changed the way they have. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting, you can check out our book when we have the full outline available over at our website at acservicetech.com. This right here is the compound manifold gauge set, and so our gauges are compound. This one's compound, that's compound, these ones are compound, and what that means is that this needle is able to go below 0 PSIG or above 0 PSIG, so pounds per square inch gauge. If it goes below zero, then you're actually in inches of HG, which is inches of mercury vacuum. So anyway, you need to calibrate these so that they're at zero at, at whatever elevation that you're, you're located at. So if you're at sea level and then you, you go to a different elevation, you're going to need to adjust these with the little adjustment screw. But we have three uh, ports right here, and so you're going to have three hoses. So this side is the low side, the low pressure side, and so that gets connected to the large vapor line. This one is the service port, and that gets connected to the yellow hose for recovery using the system's compressor or charging using just the refrigerant bottle while the system's running. And this one right here is the high pressure side, and that is for the, the liquid line. And so if this is not a heat pump gauge set, it's just a air conditioning gauge set, you're gonna have this uh, low side gauge only going up to a low number such as 350 PSIG, whereas this gauge goes up to 800 unless you have a heat pump manifold and it'll go up to a higher pressure over here on the vapor gauge. So that's the original right there. Uh, right here you have the quick connect test gauges. And if you're doing preventative maintenance and you don't want to hook up the hoses and have to perform what's called a disconnect procedure, then you can just hook up the quick connect test gauges. So you can hook these up if you assume that the charge is correct and you're not going to have to add any more refrigerant in, uh, but it just makes it for an easy connection and disconnection at the system's ports. So when you do a disconnect of the refrigerant gauge, if you don't charge the, the refrigerant that was in this red hose back into the low side, you're going to be stealing a lot of liquid refrigerant that's in a long red hose, which may be three foot or five foot. So if you're looking for a video on the full disconnect procedure, I have one linked down in the description section below. And when you're checking the refrigerant charge, you need to be able to read the temperature on the lines. So right here we have our field piece ST4, and it has two bead type temp sensors. You're going to see me usually checking the charge with this gauge set and this right here. And the reason for that is, is these are very accurate uh, compared to the, the clamps, but the clamps are faster. But anyway, these can be used for multiple, uh, this tool right here can be used for multiple different uh, things for different readings, such as reading your, your delta T inside the building through a small zip screw hole in the duct. It's a very versatile tool, and this one right here as well, it's just a cheap tool uh, that you can use uh, for somebody starting out in the field. So a lot of our audience is those technicians that are starting out in the field or those in school, and I'm trying to just show how to use the tools and how to do the procedure. So I'm typically teaching at school and usually on YouTube with these tools right here and with these. Now, the, the evolution of this uh, comes with, with a port change. So you see that there's four ports on this one and compared to the three ports on this one. The reason for that is, is there used to be a time when technicians were vacuuming the system through the manifold gauge set. And so you would put the, the, the micron gauge over here on this port and you'd put your vacuum gauge right here. You'd use a larger vacuum hose in order to try to perform the vacuum faster. But the problem with this is you're still pulling a vacuum through the manifold and you can't do a very good standing vacuum test because when you shut the vacuum pump and isolate the vacuum pump from the system, what's happening is you're vacuum gauge is still reading the vacuum through those hoses. So a lot of times if you have a deep vacuum that you're measuring on this vacuum gauge, you're going to lose it through the hoses and through the connections. There's, there's more valves. See the four valves here? There's more hoses, more chances to lose your vacuum. But that's the whole reason for this fourth port. It's for doing vacuums with. And so 
I, I typically do not do the vacuum through the manifold gauge set. Now there is a, a good reason to have a four port manifold gauge set if you are doing triple evacuations. Uh, you can hook this, this right here up to the nitrogen and have this on the vacuum. You pull your vacuum down to maybe a thousand microns and then you break your vacuum with your nitrogen then you pull your vacuum back down to say 500 microns. You, you break your vacuum again with nitrogen and then you do your final vacuum maybe down to 200 microns. The issue here still has to do with trying to trap your vacuum with your, your manifold, whether it's this manifold, this manifold, that manifold, no matter what, you have a potential for leaks and that can be a headache for when you're out in the field. So a lot of times we're using the valve core removal tools at the system ports and we're connecting the, the vacuum gauge as close to the system ports as possible so that we don't lose our vacuum through the hoses. Now, another thing that uh, this tool manufacturer had done is they've added their digital sensor directly onto the manifold where you can just clip it right on and then you have your 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 clips right here as well so you can just make a quick contact onto the the system uh, tubing right here the only issue is with any type of clamps whether it's no matter what manufacturer it is at all the the clamps tend to have a large surface area and that can get affected by the outdoor temperature so that's why I really like these little bead temp sensors and you can tape them, insulate them, whatever you need to do onto the lines just temporarily in order to take your readings uh, for your temperature to get your superheat on your low side and your subcoiling on your high side in order to check your refrigerant charge. Now we have this right here. This is a SMAN, uh, so that is a SMAN 460 and you're reading your pressures and you're able to calculate superheat and subcooling automatically because you have these temp sensors right here that you can clip right onto uh, the, the lines. So you see that that, once again, has a larger uh, metal surface there. But these clamp right into lines, it'll automatically calculate it for you. And you also have your pressure being converted to saturated temperature as long as you select your, your type of refrigerant. I have a video checking the subcoiling of a system with, with this digital manifold gauge set, and I also have a video on checking the superheat and using wireless tools as well. Now, when you check subcooling on a system, the, the rating plate on the outdoor unit is going to tell you what the subcooling, the target subcooling should be. Now, when you're checking your superheat, so right here you have your, your superheat, your vapor sat temp, your, so this is your low side, that's your high side. But your issue is you still need to know what your target superheat needs to be. And so right here, it says your target superheat, and that has to do with what you enter into, into this, this manifold. So you can actually manually set this, or you can do it automatically with wireless sensors. This wireless induct psychrometer can be synced with this tool right here. And basically what you're doing is you're drilling a 3 8 inch duct a hole right in return. You can also take one in the supply, but what you need to, de to get the target superheat is you need a wet bulb temperature. So you're going to take this just a few feet before the furnace and air conditioning system or the air handler inside the building, and this is going to transmit the, the indoor wet bulb right over here. It says IDWB. You can also sync this multimeter with the, the temp sensor. You can sync that for the outdoor dry bulb temperature, which is right over here. So therefore you can get a, a target superheat and you gotta know that the target superheat that you're gonna measure is going to be changing all the time. So it doesn't matter that you got a target superheat of maybe 9.2 right now, but as the system runs, this indoor wet bulb temperature is gonna lower. So you need to either use wireless sensors in order to automatically determine what the target superheat needs to be, or you're gonna have to continue to go indoors in order to measure your, your wet bulb temperature because that's going to change your target superheat. Now also we have our quick reference cards and these right here, uh, this one has a target superheat chart so if you have your indoor wet bulb temperature and your outdoor dry bulb temperature you can determine what that needs to be on this chart here and so we have resources like this and also our book where we have a larger target superheat chart and we talk about your indoor wet bulb and your outdoor dry bulb and checking the superheat subcooling and the troubleshooting. We have all that information in our book. But anyway, getting back to this tool right here, we can just press the target superheat again. We can get back to this main screen. Also with this tool right here and this tool, we can calibrate 
our temp sensors right here with this adjustment screw and also with this tool on this adjustment screw. Uh, you can also calibrate your atmospheric pressure to make sure that you are at zero when you start before you hook up. Now, once again, you still have four ports here. So that's, that's so that you can pull a vacuum through this manifold. But I'm telling you that me personally, I've had enough frustration uh, in, the, in the years of doing, doing this that I know that it's not worth pulling it through the manifold. I also want to do it faster. I can prove that there's no water freezing in the lines or anything like that. Well, with pulling a fast vacuum, and I have a, a video on pulling vacuums down in the description section below where you are not including your manifold. Uh, but also this tool has a built-in micron gauge. But once again, that's only if you pull your vacuum through this manifold. We also have our electronic test probes and our temp sensors. Now, you're going to use a, a device such as a phone or an iPad or something like that and you're going to be able to read your, your pressure here and your temperature. And on the handles, you just set them right here for either the suction or the liquid. And these are going to transmit wirelessly. And as well, we have these induct psychrometers. And what you do is you drill a 3 8 hole right in the, the end of the duct in order to put these in. There's a magnet so it stays right there and these will transmit wirelessly. So if you're able to take an indoor wet bulb and also an outdoor dry bulb, you can go ahead and automatically calculate your, your target superheat. But I have a video on using our electronic test probes down in the description section below. One nice thing about these is that you see that the, the metal is smaller than some of our other uh, clamps. So this actually is, is fairly accurate uh, for checking your temperature. So this is like a smart version of these and having something like this but it also has the built-in psychrometers and you're able to tell a lot more about the system's capacity and things by having that electronic readout that you have. So we've come a long way with all of the progression and the procedures over time. Once again, somebody starting out in the field is probably going to go for these types of tools instead of something that's much more expensive such as that. I don't, I typically don't use a four-port manifold. I usually use a three, a three-port I can do everything I need to do with a three port. And like I said, I pull the vacuums with just a, a two hose setup and I use three valve core removal tools and a vacuum gauge. If you want to see a video on that, I have a, a link to that down in the description section below. So in this book, I go over all the procedures that I want technicians in the field to know, such as the, the pressure test, the oil blowout procedure, if you're working on an existing system, the vacuum procedure step by step, also how to perform the standing vacuum test to make sure that you you have no frozen water, no leaks, there's no air and nitrogen in the system, so you're ready to break the vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle or from the system's ports, how to check the charge, how to troubleshoot a system, so how to read your, your pressures, your saturated temperatures, your, your subcooling, your, your superheat, so how to use all that in order to determine what a problem is during your troubleshooting procedures. So I go over that and airflow problems in the book and the full outlines available over at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have this book and the quick reference cards available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.